Hello and welcome guys to the Footy Game Day Squad Show. I'm your host Cal and joining me today, as always, I've got Kerb and I've got Tom. Fellas, how are we this afternoon? Super keen to start talking some footy. Yeah, and likewise, mate. Feeling the same. Ready to go, brother. Yeah, fantastic. I am as well. We are here, of course, for the Round 7 preview. We're going to talk everything AFL Fantasy because, of course, we are here because Game Day Squad. So currently, Australia's only fantasy sport platform built using blockchain technology. If you are new to the channel, check us out in the description below. All our links, our platform is live, our player packs are live, all of our socials, everything that we're doing is down there. So make sure you go check it out. Guys, I unfortunately had to go do a TikTok today. Um, I did lose a bet within our team. So if you are on TikTok, go search our Game Day Squad TikTok. I do give you my top five players I'd start my AFL team with, and I do expect a little bit of heat back. Please give it to me because I'm keen to go right back at you guys. But guys, we're here to review everything round seven. And Kerm, you kick things off like you do always with our weekly news. So do you want to hit us with it? I will, yeah, and there's not a lot of news that I found um, going into this round, but obviously the big one is former Ruck pig Brody Grundy is out for up to 12 weeks, which is, although he hasn't been the same Brody Grundy he has been in the past th- that to start this year, this is major, major news for fantasy. So that's a lot of uh, some ins and outs that a lot of people have to make because a lot of people like Brody Grundy and their team, and unfortunately he's up, out for up to 12 weeks. Uh, there's three mystery demons so far that are ruled out for this weekend. So they actually haven't been named yet. We don't know who they are. It could be Clayton Oliver. It could be someone we've never even heard of before. Um, so they're ruled out for this weekend. That's one to watch around the, the Melbourne Demons squad there. Darcy Parrish's ankle scare has been cleared and he will be available for Essendon this weekend, which is a massive plus considering the weekend he just had. Um, and this one's a little bit close to heart, but Sean Darcy will miss time with it while he's in concussion protocol which uh sort of rips my heart out a little bit we'll talk about him a little bit later on in our dream teams but sean darcy will miss some time unfortunately yeah and the last bit of news there port adelaide got a win on the weekend boys (laughs) they're on (laughs) they're on the board thank you we are on the board but that ruck news is big i imagine a lot of people are going to be affected by grundy and darcy so yeah Max Gorn is looking very good at the moment. Tom, we're going to flick over to you. You are going to give us our pack opening of the week. So like we said, our platform is live. Go start opening your packs. Our competition starts so, so soon. So make sure you are following us on all our socials so you are up to date when our competitions do start. But Tom, talk us through this pack we can see here. Yeah, mate. So this week's winner is Jarvis21 FC, um, winning the pack of the week and getting to enjoy a 3 by 3 common player pack on top to build out his squad a little bit a little bit nicer. But have a look at this pack, fellas. You can see what's in front of you here. This is juicy. Callum's boy, Bailey Smith in yeah. there. I know he straight away, his eyes were locked on there for sure. A um, couple of great other players just to top off the pack as well. And um, a lot of Port Adelaide players. There's yeah, a Port Adelaide two, pack there. Two Connor Rosie. Yeah, two mm. of them. Um, I go, any other week you get Connor Rosie, you'd be miserable. But he's actually had a good week, so this is not a good one. And yeah, you know how big I am on Bailey Smith. So, no, nah, that's pretty cool. Jack Sinclair, not a bad player as Having well. Having his best year. Yeah. yeah, guys. And as Callum mentioned before, we have our Discord down in the description down there. If you want to join and you can submit your packs to us on our Game Day Squad Discord, and then we're going to pick a, pick a winner every week and continue to give out free packs as these sh- shows keep rolling on. So it's the way to enter. Get in the Discord. Can't wait to see your packs in there. Alrighty, guys. We are going to jump into question of the round, which is very straightforward. We are going to break down one question that we have burning that we want answered for this round, which, of course, is round seven. And, guys, I want to kick it off. Because I want to ask the question, will George Hewitt make it two years in a row where the recruit of the season has has gone, uh, sorry, has come to their new team after leaving Tom's Sydney Swans? So Hewitt is having an awesome year this year. He's a top six oh, um, defender at the moment. He'd be in our all GDS team. Just go check out our latest review show and you'll see him in there. Averaging 10 kicks, 20 handballs, four marks, five tackles. It's giving him an average of 113 GDS points. In six years at the Swans, his highest was 85, and that was back in 2019. Last year, he could only manage 73 and couldn't even get himself on the park some games because the Swans were that crowded. So, yeah, he's a massive reason for Carlton's early success. And Alir Alir last year being the massive recruit that went to Port, obviously. So, yeah, can Swans, uh, ex-Swans players go two from two? Yeah, mate, and that's a... 
Yeah, it's an awesome point. And Kermit, you ma- you mentioned the magic formula in another show before. Do you want to remind everyone what it is? Opportunity equals production. And that's exactly what's happening there. It's great to see that he's doing really well. Um, just didn't get the same sort of looks at the Swans though, unfortunately. Yeah, very tough um, Carlton mid. All of a sudden it's become quite competitive and he's still finding himself some time to run through there. And then obviously he's a defender in our game. So he's uh, doing quite well for himself. So I'm going to throw to one of you guys. Who wants to kick it off with your question? I'll take the next one here. And I've put Jeremy Cameron as my question of the round. And I just want to see if he can back it up this week and make himself fantasy relevant again. Because we saw a GWS. Jeremy Cameron became a player who could work up the field and get those kicks, take a lot of big marks, work his way up the, up the wing and then work his way forward into the forward 50. So I want to see if we can see a little bit of that at Geelong because after seven goals last week, he's propelled himself into fantasy, fantasy consideration. Um, and he's got the Frio Dockers this week and we'll see if Alex Pierce goes to him or Tom Hawkins. That's TBD. If Alex Pierce goes to Jeremy Cameron, you might have a tough day because Pierce has been absolutely insane all Australian consideration for me. So. Just look at what he did to Mackay, right? No, yeah, last week. exactly. Exactly. So eyes on Jeremy Cameron this week. See if he's back. You got 13 kicks last week. See if he can do it again. I like it. I like it. Is he, yeah, is he legit? Tom, what have you got? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'm sticking with the forward theme here as well. And it's about Max King. I brought him up in the uh, review show last time. Uh, he was on top of the common medal race heading into round six. Unfortunately, he doesn't have it now. We mentioned before he kicked seven behinds last game. Just an unfortunate outing for him. My question is... Will he have an opportunity this week to reclaim the top spot against a struggling Port Power team? We mentioned Alir Alir will be there. That's going to be a great matchup if he's healthy. Um, I can't wait to see that personally. I feel like that's probably the best matchup that Port will have for Max King. He is a unit, and I can't wait to see what he can do. But you know what? I think he's going to be back on top very soon, in my personal opinion. I'll be at this game too at the Great Kazali Stadium, so hopefully he lights it up. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Yeah. Is that up in up in Cairns? The real up in Cairns, Kazali Stadium. Yeah, you'll have a correspondent there live. I told you guys I hadn't watched the Port game from the weekend. I still plan mm-hmm. to do it. I haven't done it. I don't even. Yeah, I didn't even know they were playing the Saints this week. So thanks for letting <laughs> me know. That tells you where I am at with my support of the Port Adelaide at the moment. Um, but I like that. He's so tall. Like. He's so tall. That's the one thing that you look when you look at him. It's just head and shoulders about everyone else. And when he's on, he's fantastic. So now him for the Coleman is a nice little bet. What I want to move on to here is our rolling dream team. So each week we make changes to our team. Like we said, our platform is not up yet. So when our platform launches, you'll be actually seeing our teams and we'll be showing you our teams. But at the moment, we're kind of doing our dream squad that we can do. We've all taken a different approach. Tom's gone for win now. I've gone for a bit more of a future dynasty approach like our platform is and Kerm's somewhere in between. So, Kerm, I've got yours up first. Do you want to talk us through the couple of changes you've made to your team this week? Yeah, absolutely. And we spoke about in last week's review show how good Josh Dunkley's been. Um, And he is a mid in our game. So I've actually gone and chucked him in. I've put our money where our mouth is and chucked Josh Dunkley into my dream team ahead uh, ahead of the likes of Bailey Smith and Josh McRae in his own team. So... Josh Dunkley wow. works his way into my team. Um, and with Sean Darcy being injured, uh, Max Gorn comes into my ruck. So I've only used one of the allotted two trades this week because um, you get two trades every week in GDS Fantasy. So I only used one. Not too Who many changes, but... Uh, Took Miller actually went out. I oh, ripped trying my to slide that one out. by us. Wow. I know, I know. I forgot to. I didn't want to mention it because he's one of my own, and I was so high on him going into the year. And he actually had a really good week last week. He actually laid a tackle for once, um, put his body on the line. But yeah, he goes out <laughs> of my dream team. It's it's a shame because I thought he was going to be there all year. I just said and forget. Yeah. There you go, trying to say goodbye. That stunned me as well. But um, yeah, Dunkley's definitely deserved a spot in everyone's nearly best 18. Mm. He's been killing it. He's been on fire this year. So I can see why he did it. Must have hurt though, (laughs) you can tell. (laughs) But I'll get into mine, Uh, my changes. I used both of my subs this week. Um, I mentioned I was going to go for the forwards. I have done that. Jack Dunstan is officially out of my best 18 and he's being replaced by Jordan Degoe. Um... That just had to be done. It was just waiting. It was a ticking time bomb. Gunson had a pretty good round one. Hasn't been able to back that up since. So 
I think that was quite a fair little change out. And then I've gone for a backman, uh, Jack Zebel. I put him on the hot seat. I put him on my cell now for the uh, review show. He's, He's now out of the team. It's yeah, I had out. to get him yeah. out. And I've replaced him with Jaden Short from Richmond there. He's been really good this nice. year. He's been electric. I've mm. been loving what I've been seeing from him. Um, yeah, deserved a spot in the best 18. I'm glad I got him in there. So, yeah, made both changes. What about you, Callum? What have we got? Before you go into that, I'm just welcome to finally getting rid of Gunston. <laughs> that was a few weeks too late, in my <laughs> opinion. You did listen to me when I told you get rid of him, but no, I'm happy to see him finally go. Um, my team, mine were pretty straightforward this week. Nice and easy. Grundy out, Gorn in, um, and then Darcy to the bench there. So Grundy, like we said, is out for, what, 10 to 12 weeks, and Gorn's the number one ruckman in the comp. So that was easy, nothing there. And again, the other change I made, super simple. Paul did hammy, didn't get, couldn't get him out last week, so he's jumped out of my team. And Hewitt, who I've spoken about before, is now in. So Love that. pretty vanilla from me this week, guys. But you know, sometimes it's easy when it's like that. Hey guys, if you made it this far in the video, consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, push those post notifications on so you're updated with when we're releasing. We've got NRL, AFL review, preview shows every single week, trying to help you guys get game day ready. As Callum mentioned before, check all the links in the description as well if you're not sure what we're about here and what we're trying to do. But let's get it off with the hot seat. And I love this segment because yeah. we can have a stab at some players who aren't in some form. Kerm, take it away, mate. Who's in your hot seat this week? Yeah, I love getting it off. And I am going to talk about someone we spoke about in the review show again, which is Zach Butters. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the photo of him. <laughs> He's not looking too happy there and he shouldn't be after last week too because it was quite an embarrassing performance after only putting up 11 disposals and we spoke about how this game is going to be up in cans and I'm going to be keeping a close eye on him because I want to see him just torch it up. I want to see him play footy again. I spoke about him a lot in the off season, like a ton. I wrote about him a lot. And I just want to see him playing that inside footy again and winning the ball. So Zach Butters, I think, is deservedly being is deserved of being on the hot seat here. Um, and hopefully he's not going to be on it for long. That's a good one. It's a good one. That photo, it's amazing. But yeah, yeah, too <laughs> right. He, I think, like the rest of, or like a lot of Port Adelaide players at the moment, just haven't quite been hitting the form. So that's a good one, Tom. Who have you put in your hot seat? Yeah, mate, flick it over. It is Jake Stringer. I really like Jake Stringer as a player um, when I watch him play, just the way he can dominate a game. But this year just hasn't been his year. In the three games he's played, he hasn't cracked the 90 GDS fantasy score in either one, which astounded me. Could not believe my eyes when I was looking at that. Um, all games as well, he's looking closer to the 70 mark rather than the 90 to 100, which you know, you'd know you sort of want from a player like Jake Stringer yeah. if you're using that capital and getting him. Um, you know, Essendon have been hit with the injury bug early, but I thought this was an opportunity for Jake Stringer to step up and really take over, uh, be a ball-dominant player. This just hasn't been the case. Um, will Jake Stringer come back into form as the season goes on, or are these performances we are seeing from him currently going to be a theme this year? Because I'll tell you what, I haven't been too impressed from his play. He had a couple goals last game, but irrespective, still didn't even crack the 100 GDS fantasy score mark. Bit underwhelming, if you ask me. 100%. And I think I'm in the camp of we know who Jake Stringer is now as a fantasy player. Mm. I can't see him being that 100-plus that player again for me. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I'm going to be very interested to see what people do with him when we get our transfer market up and running and what people value Jake Stringer as. Because, yeah, there's that name and there's that allure, but, yeah, will he, um, will he be overpriced for what he actually delivers? My um, my hot seat, I've given it to one of your boys, Tom, and I've given it to Dane Rampey. So the 10-year veteran here, he's having his worst fantasy season of his career, and that's including his rookie year way back in 2013. He's averaging below 50 points, and his last three rounds, he's gone 40, 35, and 34 which is extremely poor for someone who's spent the majority of time on ground. And the Swans aren't playing well. They don't need him to be the guy down back racking up 30 possessions. But for me, you'd still expect him to offer something going forward. And he just hasn't been getting himself involved in the play there. He is in. A, he did have his contract extended one more year in the offseason. So the Swans have even put him in the hot seat, knowing that he's only got this year as well. But I think he got lucky with McCartan going down with that concussion, that it means that he's not going to be going out. So he's got himself a little bit of time. 
but when Paddy comes back, um, then hopefully, yeah, hopefully Paddy comes back and then, yeah, that does put himself under a bit of pressure there. So he's in my hot seat for this week. I love that yeah, call of Paddy McCartan because he's going to put a lot of pressure on the Dane Rampy. Dane Rampy hasn't been anywhere near where he has been in the past. So that's a really good call on Paddy McCartan for me. Yeah, and just going to agree with all of you guys there as well. Um, Lloyd has just been a ball magnet in the backs, um, really helping the Swans move the ball in transition, connecting to the midfielders and eventually the forwards. Um, and yeah, rampy has gone missing. That's sort of been his role and his identity over the past couple of years. But Jake Lloyd's success is sort of Dan Rampy's downfall. So we'll mm-hmm. see what happens there as the season progresses. And the thing with Game Day Squad, for those who are new to the platform or haven't heard too much about how our game works, all the different cards have different multipliers. So you might have a Dane Rampy that's a diamond that still has a 1.4. That could put a score of 70 all of a sudden up to a score of 100. And then all of a sudden it becomes relevant. But he's at that point at the moment that even with a 1 of 1 legend card, that 1.5 multiplier is doing nothing. He's not still not making it into your team. And yeah, if you have a legend card, you want to be able to use it. So yeah, unfortunate for anyone that would be packing him at the moment. But guys, going to move on to my stat of the week. And I've got a good one from Anzac Day. So Darcy Parrish, 31 handballs on Anzac Day is the ninth highest of any player in a single AFL game in history. The most ever was back in 2018 where Matt Crouch got 35 against North Melbourne. So I was, I was, yeah, everyone, I think everyone was sitting there watching Anzac Day being like, geez, well, how many is this guy going to finish on? I reckon if he didn't have that injury, he would have uh, absolutely yeah, blitzed that record. But yeah, I, I had to go away and have a look at it. But that's my stat of the week. That's crazy stat. Handball match it. Yeah. Is it a few yeah, wow. And only there? four off the that's most great. all time. And he, as you mentioned, that time off ground, that's huge. He would have had that easy, surely, the way he was playing. Yeah, yeah. Something to aim for next year, hey? And speaking of something to aim for, guys, lock of the round, my favorite segment on anything we do. And as you can see why there, it's because I am still on top. Duncan, you guys laughed at me when I only locked him in for 85 and he got 94. So yay me, I've gone four from six and I'm in the lead there. How did you guys go with your picks? Torano had his worst game of the year. Nowhere near what I put him at at 115. Uh, Really let me down, to be fair. (laughs) Speaking of letting people down, I played the Bailey Smith card last week. I uh, said he was going to get leather poisoning, and I reckon it couldn't have been further from the truth. He, there was no leather poisoning out there for Bailey Smith. Um, the Bulldogs just played so unorthodox. They did not look like themselves, and unfortunately, it's hurt me. He hasn't hit the 130 that I was asking from him that day. Yeah, rough for you guys. If you add both your scores together, you still can't even catch me. So I'm loving this at the moment. It just shows you guys, out of everyone to listen to on this show, I am your guy. And I'm going to tell you who to lock this week. I'm going to tell you, go ahead and lock Benny Keys for 120 this week. He's had back-to-back games of 140, and he's in some red-hot form. And he's coming up against a GWS team that I don't think are going to look after him very well in their midfield. So, yeah. And they haven't historically played well down in Adelaide either. So I think he's going to have a big day. And I think the Crows are also going to win. I picked Benny Keys, yep. Oh, all right. Let me go, Cam. Only because I've also, without even knowing that he's gone for it, picked Ben oh, Keys. Oh, the Love the lock. matchup. But this is my hope here. He's gone for 120. I've locked in 115. Let's go Ben <laughs> Keys for 117, baby. Let's get it. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Let's You've let's see if now. Callum can have a bit of my own medicine here. I've oh, been stitched up with these one to two point losses. Maybe it could come back to bite him. <laughs> what about yours, Kern? Have you gone keys one. for a third? No, I haven't gone keys. Um, I've gone one of my own. I've gone Noah Anderson, and I just want some points on the board here. We're coming up. We're coming up against Collingwood, who I don't think you're going to send anyone to him. Um, but Noah Anderson, I've locked in for 103 GDS points. I'm going with the uh, little odd number. Yeah. that I'm doing here. So, Love that. Yeah, Noah Anderson, locking him in. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm looking forward to this. I do have a bad feeling about Benny Keys now that I've seen him on your <laughs> screen, Tom. But, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. That is everything for our preview show. If you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please think about doing so. Hit us with a like. It does go a long way in helping us grow not only our platform, but everything we're trying to do here at Game Day Squad. Like I said, there is that embarrassing TikTok of me now going around. There's a few other things as well. Everything's in the description. Please keep sending us in your packs of the week because we want to see 
you, your name up here and we can give out you out. We'll give away some free packs. So yeah, guys, until enjoy the footy this week and until next week, stay game day ready. Mm-hmm.